Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the weekly wave. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started. Please remember if you have questions at the end of each section, if you'll um, just unmute yourself and ask them, that would be appreciated. Um, first thing we're going to start with today is accountability reporting. Um, currently open, they have the chronic absentee medical exemption window. It's going to be open throughout the school year. Um, Webinar training is going to be provided through the Office Accountability throughout the year. So, you know, look for more details on that. Um, remember, when you're um, working this particular exemption window, you have to have a local committee that actually meets to approve or deny a request. And then you're going to also have a site user, which they, um, the CA medical exemption window, to, they, they use the window to process and submit requests and upload the committee's approved absences and documentation for each student. And then you're gonna have a district admin user who reviews the request and supporting documentation for each student medi um, medically exempted absences to approve or deny the request. The admin user and your site user have to be two different people. So keep that in mind. Also, from accountability, um, the dropout report, the conflicts piece of that has been turned on right now. And they're gonna announce when the window is gonna be open for the DVR function. So that is not available currently. You can just go in and view your conflicts. They also um, opened the report card CVR and it's gonna close on December the 7th. They provided a webinar yesterday. Um, there was three different ses sessions on the report card calculations. Um, so if you weren't able to attend those um, webinars, I've provided the link on YouTube that you can go back and rewatch that information if you need to. Um, and always be sure you check your data to ensure that it's correct. Any other windows that are opening through the Office of Accountability will be announced through the Gov delivery notification, so um, make sure that you're signed up for that. Also in accountability reporting, um, if you're resolving enrollment conflicts for um, school year 21-22, um, it's located on the dropout tab and students coded as transferring to another public school in Oklahoma, which used a um, exit code of 1907-1908 or 3508 will display as having an enrollment conflict and show as a dropout unless um, OSDE's data system displays subsequent enrollment. So, or an exit code has been updated to reflect a different exit reason. So record conflicts can be updated using your, um, the DVR process. So please know that that can, you can make, to cor make your corrections that way and also a reminder that if you have a student that exited your district before October 20, I'm sorry, October 1st of this year, and is still showing up as a dropout, it means that student has yet to enroll in another Oklahoma school district and may be included in the dropout report. There is a guidance listed below on how to resolve those conflicts. So be sure that um, you're looking at that guidance if you have any of those issues. Also, post-secondary data collection review, um, please continue to evaluate your courses and sections in your local student information systems for the 22-23 post-secondary data collection. Administr administrators um, should plan to review the accountability coursework in January to ensure grades are displaying as expected for post-secondary credit. And there is a note that um, OSD is not using coursework grades for any grade level under ninth grade. So if your district is not currently sending section marks for PK through eighth grade, you don't have any, there's no action that's required. Okay, does anyone have any questions about the information that I've um, provided on accountability reporting? Did you say we we're able to do a DVR now? I'm sorry, someone walked in to the um, office. Dropouts? Um, yes. No, not yet. It's not okay. open yet. 
it, you can just see what your conflicts are at this point. Okay. Nancy, this is Chris with Tulsa, and we're experiencing, um, I would say probably 50% of the time when I log into the accountability reporting site, there's no data there. And I don't know if it's the time of the day I'm logging in or what's happening, but just nothing loads. Okay. Um, I'm not aware of any issues, Chris, but I'll definitely pass that along. Is there a specific time that you normally log in? Well, usually in the evenings after work or early in the mornings before work. So uh, maybe it's my timing. I don't know, but it will tell you that there's no student data available. Okay. Well, let me check on that and I will get back to you. Nancy, this is Jennifer Thank you. from James. I'm experiencing the same thing. Yesterday, we were working on just going through our post-secondary opportunities through the report card just to you know, verify calculations. And when uh -huh. you click on the numerator denominator, nothing's populating. It just spins and spins. OK. Let me check um, with their vendor and see if, you know, if it's the time that you're doing it. Or is that, do you look at it about the same time, Jennifer? Well, I had looked at it. Um, at the end of the day yesterday. So it was around 5.30 when I was on it and I hadn't tried it this morning. Okay. Let me check and see what I can find out for y'all. Thank you. You're welcome. Does anybody have anything else? Nancy, this is Christy from Tuttle. Uh -huh. I, I do have a question on uh, the post-secondary data collection and um, kind of like missing grades kind of goes all hand in hand. Um, we have noticed on when we're looking at their courses and things like that, sometimes the schedule changes and the kid, you know, drops out of sociology, but takes psychology or something, but it's not reporting those changes. And it's still looking like the class that they dropped is a, a missing grade. I've had infinite campus look to make sure that they're reporting changes. Um, is this normal? Is it something I need to be worried about? You know, does, does those missing grades go into a calculation that gives us a bad grade? Or I'm just trying to understand all of that. I am not really sure about that. Um, June, are you on the call? And can you, if you are, can you speak to that? Um, I didn't hear the, the full explanation, but it would probably be best if you send me an email or just call me and we'll just look at your specific issue. Okay, that sounds great. Thank okay. you. Thanks, June. Thanks, Christy. Does anybody have anything else? Okay, let's move on. We don't have a lot to cover today, but just the things that are going on currently. So PBT training, I hope everyone's had an opportunity to um, log into the PBT training and um, check that out. If you, you know, if you haven't and you need to, if you don't have a OSD Canvas um, login, you'll need to create account, an account um, when you use the link your email will have to be validated and you'll have to set up login credentials to be enrolled in the course. Also, um, the training itself is broken to several different modules and it's, it's very nicely done. There's in-depth training for an understanding the PBET and various scenarios and how to um, learn how to evaluate if a student qualifies. There are modules um, for the DVR process that are located towards the end of the training and there's a PDF documentation in the last module. Um, you can stop and start the training at any time and return at any time. And um, when you return to the link, access Canvas through the menu, menu to locate the training that you're enrolled in. So when you get in there, it's actually gonna look like this. So um, hope everyone has done that. Um, does anybody have any questions about that? Hello, well, Nancy, this is Jennifer from Jinx again. Um, I am not the one in my district working on that report, but I have been um, supporting the person who is. Uh -huh. And they had a question, um, you know, they've gone through the training and they've looked at things, but they're still not real comfortable on knowing what exactly 
they're supposed to be doing. Um, is there someone in, out there listening who has already done this, completed it, feels comfortable with it, that would be available for questions because we've, or she's reached out to the State Department, but the um, person who's supervising this project or whatever is unavailable and is out. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, no. And so we were just looking if there's someone who wouldn't mind just being available just to answer some questions or whatever, just to kind of help us move forward. Jennifer, I appreciate you putting that out there. And if there are any districts that have started working on that, wouldn't mind um, kind of mentoring Jennifer in this process, that would be awesome. Andy, if this not, is Wendy at Moore. I've got one question. Okay. We've got a bunch of our requests are simply address changes, but we're concerned that once we once they get the address change corrected with DHS, that they're still going to have a question about their PEBT. Should we go ahead and process those and see if they qualify or not, just to let you guys know? Because a lot of the address changes don't even qualify. You don't need to work the address changes. Um, those I had put out some guidance earlier in the year. Right, we saw that. that. Yeah, so if you have it in there, and we, we don't really have a way to get that address changed to DHS. So if their addresses are wrong, they'll just need to contact um, Sandra. We'll put her email address in there for okay. Okay, Tom Nutrition or contact DHS directly. All you are validating is their attendance is correct, that their free reduced status is correct, right. that their enrollment code is correct, or making changes to those, or that your calendar days are correct. Right. So I guess the question is, we're not going to be updating the address or anything like that, but if the if it's only an address request, should we still go ahead and check the attendance and see if they qualify? Um, yes, go ahead and check to make sure that everything is, is correct. Okay. Okay. And then if, if you do that, if you create a DVR and you confirm that everything is accurate, parent reported address wrong, we'll process that DVR. And okay. then that, that should come back up into the data that we resend. We'll make sure that we pull that student's data and send it. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And Jennifer, I don't know if you saw it in the chat, but um, June also said if you have questions about PEBT, you can reach out to her via email and she'll set a time to work with you on it. Hey, that'll be great. Thanks. You're oh, welcome. It'll be me and the, the person who's working on the report. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Kelly has asked, um, they received an email from Epic. A student, this is Turner, has been withdrawn from tru truancy from Epic Charter Schools. Um, if they withdraw a second time due to truancy per House Bill 2905H, House Bill 2905 Section 3, 1 through, 1 through 145.8, Pursuant to charter schools attendance, the student will not be eligible to re-enroll in a statewide virtual charter school for um, school year 22-23. Will you be notified again if there is a second withdrawal per house bill requirements? My question is, um, will we be charged with a dropout for a second time that they drop for truancy? Kelly, there, you're only going to be you're only going to be held accountable if their last enrollment was with you. Whatever school holds the last enrollment is the school that will hold the dropout. Now, if they come back to your district, then yes, you would. Okay. I didn't, you know, that it seems like they might be out there in La La Land if they drop them and we don't realize that they've been dropped. <laughs> so I just wanted to make sure that, um, you know, as a school district, even though they would be our responsibility because they're in our district, that we wouldn't be um, charged with that. But yeah, that makes sense. That's that's what we've done in the past, but I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, whoever has the last enrollment record. Yeah, would be charged with that. Okay, sounds good. Uh -huh. Anybody have any other questions about PBT? Okay, all right, let's um, move on to requesting state assistance. And I know I sound like a broken record, but 
Um, please include your name and phone number on each request. Provide the student's state testing number or local ID only. Um, we don't want any personal information on a student. This includes any email sent to the student data info at sde.ok.gov. If you're communicating with us in the team's group chats or any of our personal email boxes, just want to make sure we keep the student's information as secure as possible. So we ask that you please follow those guidelines when contacting us. Um, new WAVE accounts, if you've got anybody in your district that's requesting a new WAVE account, they have to, or the superintendents will have to provide them the access through sing the single sign-on initially, and then the employee would want to reach out to OMES and request an affiliate's log on. If you, um, I would add Matthew Johnston in your ticket to be assigned to it because he is the one that actually sets that up. And um, if you're getting, you know, you can expect a, probably a 72 hour turnaround for the access to actually show up and to contact OMES, your, um, their email is service desk at OMES.ok.gov. Or if you're just having issues logging into an, a current WAVE account, you want to access the single sign, single sign on page, click where it says to open the wave, you'll log in with your affiliates log on. And um, in most cases, you would get another page, a Microsoft page that asks you to log in again. You want to use your same affiliates login information. Then you would click, you forgot your password, if you forgot your password, and the system should email you a temporary password and you'll have to change it at that point. Now, for some reason, it, th these steps do not work. You're gonna have to call or reach out to OMES, which is service desk at omes.ok.gov. Um, other than that, um, if you have questions, you can always contact student data info at sde.ok.gov or um, you can access our resource material at the SDE website under student information documents and guidance. And I see we have one more question. When will 2122 PEB information be re re ready to review? June, I don't know if we have a date on that yet, do we? Say that again, please. Um, when will the 2122 PEB information be ready to review? It, it won't be for a while. It, it won't be at least until after the end of January. Yeah, because we're open, this particular window is open to, through January, correct? Yes. Okay. All right. And um, does anyone have any further inform or any further questions they'd like to ask or um, that's all we have at this time. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording.